Does the absence of receipts equate to transparency and accountability in financial matters? This is the provocative question we pose today as we delve into the intricate world of fiscal autonomy and the handling of budgetary allocations within the Philippine Congress. At the heart of the matter is concurrent resolution number 10, a piece of legislation that has stirred up controversy and debate. It allows for the liquidation of expenses by certification without the need for receipts. Meanwhile, the Commission on Audit, the body tasked with ensuring financial accountability, finds itself in a position where it can only post-audit these certifications. Let's delve into the core of this resolution. So, what exactly is Concurrent Resolution Number 10? This document, passed in the Philippines, is a form of legislation that pertains to how the budgetary allocations of each member of the Senate and the House of Representatives are accounted for and liquidated. In simpler terms, it's a rule about how lawmakers handle, report, and justify the money they spend that's allocated for their respective offices. The resolution maintains what's described as the prevailing system of accounting and liquidation. This simply means that the current method of handling these funds remains unchanged. Now, you might ask, what's so special about this prevailing system? Excellent question. This system allows for the liquidation of expenses through certification without the requirement of providing receipts. This approach, while it may seem practical on the surface, carries with it some potential issues. It's important to note that this resolution is classified as consistent with applicable accounting and auditing rules. This means that it's in line with the current laws and regulations about how money should be accounted for and audited. However, the key point to note here is that the Commission on Audit, or COA, has the power to liquidate these expenses simply through certification. No receipts are needed. This means that the COA can confirm that funds have been spent without needing to see physical proof of where and how the money was used. Now, this isn't about questioning the integrity of our lawmakers or the COA. It's about transparency and accountability, two pillars that form the foundation of any democratic system. Now that we understand what this resolution is, let's explore why it's problematic. The question remains, is this resolution truly in the best interest of the public? As we delve into the intricacies of the Senate concurrent resolution number 10, we begin to see a pattern of potential issues that could arise from its implementation. At first glance, the resolution appears to enhance accountability by requiring fund liquidation through certification. However, the absence of a receipts requirement opens up a Pandora's box of potential loopholes for corruption. Without receipts, it becomes incredibly difficult to track the exact allocation of funds, making it easier for unscrupulous individuals to misuse them. This lack of transparency raises serious questions about how public funds are being managed and spent. Moreover, the resolution might unintentionally empower those who might wish to exploit the system for personal gain. The mere certification of fund disbursement without the obligation to provide verifiable documentation could potentially pave the way for embezzlement and financial mismanagement. While the resolution does not impede the Commission on Audit's post-audit function, it does raise concerns about the effectiveness of such audits. Without the necessary documentation, the Commission might face challenges in conducting thorough and efficient investigations, thus undermining the very purpose of their oversight function. It's also worth noting the potential impact on the public's trust in their elected officials. With the lack of transparency and potential for misuse of funds, public faith in the system could easily be eroded. This is a troubling prospect, as trust is a fundamental pillar of any functioning democracy. Furthermore, critics of the resolution have likened it to a form of legalized corruption. This provocative term paints a stark picture of the potential consequences of the resolution. It suggests that, under the guise of maintaining fiscal autonomy, the resolution could enable uh, a system where misuse of funds is not just possible, but legalized. These issues lead us to a pressing call to action. In the face of these concerns, what can we do to ensure transparency and accountability? Well, the first step is to question the status quo, the Senate concurrent resolution. 
Number 10 allows the liquidation of expenses by certification alone, which could potentially lead to misuse of funds. It's crucial that we urge the Congress of the Philippines to open their books for audit and duly itemize their expenses. By doing so, we can foster transparency and maintain accountability. This isn't just about keeping an eye on where the money is going. It's about ensuring that the funds allocated to our representatives are being used for the good of the people they serve. It's about preventing potential misuses of fiscal autonomy, cited by critics as instances of overspending and extravagance. Imagine a system where our legislators are not only accountable for their actions, but also for every single peso they spend. A system where verifiable documentation is not an option but a requirement. This would not only deter potential misuse of funds, but also reinforce the trust between the people and their representatives. The importance of having verifiable documentation can't be stressed enough. It's the cornerstone of accountability, and without it we risk falling into a pit of financial ambiguity. It's not just about tracking every peso spent, it's about ensuring that these pesos are spent wisely, effectively, and in the best interest of the public. Let's not forget that the power to change this lies in our hands. We, the people, have the right to demand transparency and accountability from those who represent us. We can voice our concerns, ask the hard questions, and insist on a system that works for us, not against us. And this is where you as responsible citizens come in. We need to remain vigilant, informed, and engaged. Let's demand accountability, transparency, and integrity from our representatives, because at the end of the day, they serve us, and it's our responsibility to make sure they do it well. How can you, as a citizen, make a difference? Our democracy is not a spectator sport and your involvement is crucial. You have the power to raise awareness about this issue of fiscal autonomy and the need for greater transparency. Talk about it. Share it on social media, write about it in your blogs, discuss it with your friends and family. The more people understand the implications of such resolutions, the more pressure we can collectively apply on our representatives. Engage in meaningful discussions, not just online but also offline. Attend town hall meetings, local community gatherings and forums where you can voice your concerns. Ask your representatives direct questions about their stand on Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 10. Your questions can spark important conversations and potentially influence your representative's stance. But it doesn't stop at raising awareness and engaging in discussions. You have a very powerful tool at your disposal. Your vote. In the next elections, remember to vote for candidates who uphold transparency and accountability. Your vote can send a strong message to our leaders that you value these principles. Urge your representatives to support the call for an audit. Let them know that you, as a constituent, demand transparency. Write them letters, send them emails, or use social media to reach out to them. Your representatives are there to serve you, and they need to hear your voice. Lastly, remember that the power of the people is stronger than the people in power. Each one of us has the potential to influence change. We, the people, have the power to hold our leaders accountable. We have the power to demand transparency. And together, we can ensure that our leaders serve the public interest, not their own. Remember, transparency and accountability are not just concepts. They are our rights. And in conclusion, while concurrent resolution number D, the 10th of may be legal, it doesn't necessarily mean it's right or beneficial for the public. This resolution, although aimed at enhancing accountability, has raised significant concerns about potential misuse of funds without proper documentation, as well as the possibility of fiscal autonomy being taken to extremes. The heart of the issue lies in the Commission on Audit's ability to liquidate expenses by certification without the need for receipts. This practice, while streamlining the liquidation process, may also open the door to overspending and extravagance. It is important to highlight that while legislators can certify fund disbursement, they are still obligated to provide verifiable documentation and are subject to audits. We've discussed the importance of transparency and accountability in government spending and how the prevailing system of accounting and liquidation may be at odds with these principles. We've also called for the Congress of the Philippines to open their books for audit and itemize their expenses, a step that would go a long way in fostering trust and ensuring responsible use of public funds. Change doesn't happen overnight. It requires collective effort, public awareness and the willingness to question the status quo. 
As citizens, it is our right and duty to hold our representatives accountable for their actions and decisions. Change begins with awareness, and accountability begins with transparency. It's time for the Congress to open their books for audit, demand it for the sake of our future.